Hello and welcome. Uh, this is James from the DSO Imager channel and today I'm going to show the work that I've done on uh, the Eagle Nebula taken with my Astronomics 115 millimeter triplet refractor. Now uh, for this year this target was kind of a kind of a parking target for me. Um, had a lot of challenges with it as far as collecting data uh, weather related. Uh, so all the data, with the exception of O3, was captured with a very bright moon, either full or near full. And uh, during the time of this capture, it was also very windy out. Uh, so the, the tracking was not good, and I even contemplated not processing the data at all. Uh, but, you know, it, the weather has been so, uh, so spotty that, um, <laughs> I mean, it was this or nothing, pretty much. All right, and um, here's the uh, total collection. So I got a little over 14 hours, and uh, that's what the numbers came out to be. So let's take a look <clears throat> at uh, the separate channels. So here's the O3, and um, plenty of O3 in this uh, in this target. And the O3 is probably the highest quality data that I captured due to the weather. Uh, here is the S2, and so yeah, you can see the star shapes are not great in here, but I mean, we're still getting some nice detail. I mean, this is not bad. That that So AT115 uh, with the 0.8 reducer, it gets me at 644 millimeters. So I think that detail is, is not bad for 644 millimeters. And uh, of course HA. Yeah, really bad stars. I mean, it was the stars in AHA that, that had me second guess even processing this. But, I mean, with, with a bright moon, I got some data, so. Now, usually what I do, uh, and what I did here with uh, narrow band, is I'll run dynamic background extraction on each channel, and then I'll run deconvolution on each channel, and um, then I'll combine them. So I do have some videos out there on my channel where I go through the process of um, showing how to run, how I run de uh, background uh, extraction. And I also have a video dedicated to deconvolution, which is, uh, I think, a good video really uh, demystifies that whole process. So if that's something that you want to do with, uh, with, within PixInsight, please check out that video. Uh, deconvolution at this focal length it helps it's not it's not a requirement I find that deconvolution uh, really works well with my um, 8 inch edge data and with um, with my 70 millimeter refractor I mean it helps a little bit but it's not it's not uh, like an earth shattering result <laughs> but uh, let's take a look at what each of these look like so right there's HA and this is what it looks like. Let me remove that preview. And let's give it a equal auto stretch. So that gives you an idea of how it looks before and after dynamic background extraction and um, and deconvolution. So right off the bat uh, the contrast is definitely better. And uh, if we zoom in, kind of hard to see here, but let's dial this uh, auto stretch back a little bit. So what can we see here? Well, uh, stars are definitely tighter after deconvolution, which is one of the primary points of it. Uh, but also uh, the details in the nebula are a little bit sharper. We've Basically what we've done is we've recovered some of the um, uh, information that we lost due to the uh, atmosphere, right? So it's, it's counteracting 
counteracting the blurring effect that we get from the atmosphere a bit. So, I mean, yeah, definitely here, I think deconvolution was, uh, was beneficial. Now, we are getting a little bit of ringing on the stars here from the deconvolution process, but, I mean, part of that is due to the poor, poor star quality, which was the result of trying to guide in 12 mile an hour winds. <laughs> uh, let's look at S2. So that's what S2 came out to be. And uh, here's our O3. All right, so I put them all together in the LRGB combination tool. That's just uh, this guy right here, all right? You can even see them in there. So you uncheck luminance because we don't have a luminance channel. We're just doing uh, narrow band. We assign S2 to red, HA to green, and O3 to blue. So I, I actually prefer the classic SHO. There are different variations in color palettes that you can try. Uh, when doing narrow band in astrophotography, you do have a lot of latitude in how you want to play with the colors. But the classic show, uh, that's my, my favorite. And this is what we end up with. All right, and so this is with uh, the auto stretch and with channels unlocked. And that's what gives you a, the ability to see some of the blue. You get a lot of purple, a lot of magenta. All this green and yellow is from that very strong HA signal. If we lock our channels, uh, we end up with a rather green image. Now, I made a clone. Uh, and then the next thing that I do after I combine uh, monochrome data into a color image is I do a background neutralization and a um, color calibration. So those are under um, color calibration. Uh, and so each step here, uh, this is this is the, uh, the starting point, if you will. And so this is after background neutralization. And then this is after color calibration. Now, it doesn't look like much. I mean, we've still got the same kind of magenta in the back there. Uh, but um, it helps after, after your stretch. And so the next step after doing this is I stretch. And... Uh, what I used was the um, the easy processing soft stretch, which I like. And so this gives us our initial stretched image. Now the next thing I do after this, well, I made a, a clone and renamed it, is um, I remove the stars. Now the funny thing about this, uh, I use Star Exterminator, which is fantastic by the way. Uh, it, it's not a free uh, script and I have a video out there when Star Exterminator first came out uh, that talks about how to get it and its initial use. But um, uh, I really like Star Exterminator. Uh, the free version that's available for PixInsight is StarNet. And uh, both of them will sometimes grab a bit of nebulosity that's really bright. And when I first ran Star Exterminator, it was pulling little bits of this out. And when adding the stars back, it was kind of destroying some of the detail. Like, you know, pulled it out and then it put it back and it, it just foobarred it. So I created a mask, and I think the mask is still on there, yeah. So what I did is I used the game script and created this mask that protect the regions that were pulling through uh, when I ran Star Exterminator. And these protected them pretty well. I still got a little bit out of them, uh, but when adding the stars back in, it wasn't creating any problems. So the mask did what it needed to do, which was just protect these brighter areas on the uh, nebula. All right, uh, let's see. So hide the mask and we'll step through some of the steps I took. There we go, stars are out. Uh, subtracting green with the SCNR tool. I didn't do a lot. I want to say it was like 60% or so. Invert, subtracting green again to kind of tame that magenta that's in there 
and uh, ended up with this. All right, so I made another clone to continue processing. And uh, this is where things get a bit interesting. So a pretty dramatic change here. And what I used was the HDR compression. Is that what it's called? HDR multi-scale transform. Yeah. And so this tool, uh, the, you can see the settings that I ended up with. Uh, this tool does a really good job of um, uh, giving you a lot of contrast. And that's kind of what I was after is I wanted to see a lot of this darker dust specifically like these areas here just really helps you start to see like I mean like you can see little strands of dust in here I mean they're there before but they don't they don't stand out as much so I thought this would be pretty cool uh, this is the main uh, variable that you tweak and I tried a whole bunch of different uh, values here and 7 is what I thought looked the best on this one right it's not always the case right like don't go to 7 every time sometimes 8 looks better sometimes 5 looks better uh, sometimes it'll be really contrasty but but it looks overcooked and then I'll use pixel math and, and add it to, to the original version to kind of come up with a balanced version. So it's just another tool in the toolkit to play around with. Uh, then after that it was really a bunch of curves work and I went in a lot of different directions. You can see some masks, protect that area, darken. And um, it's kind of a a difficult nebula I think to get a really good color balance uh, with my 8 inch edge I took a one of the first pictures I took <laughs> was uh, Pillars of cre uh, Creation with that scope and the tighter field of view did a really good job and and there's a lot of nice color but when you take the wider field shot you have all these somewhat dimmer regions interesting structure it's it's a challenge I think to get a really good color while retaining the the classic show look uh, in the pillars in the center there so I made I made a, a bunch of different um, versions and uh, I mean you can see some of the work that I've done here um, I ended up with um, three different versions and so rather than step through all the steps you can see there's a ton of masks here and uh, some work over here uh, rather than then go through all this I'm just going to show the three final results if you will <laughs> and um, kind of look at them right so this one here we have uh, kind of a bronzy look this was achieved by removing a lot of the green. I use a mask to protect the green in the um, pillar region. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know. Too much green taken out? It's hard to say, right? Everyone, everyone has their own uh, taste. And uh, this one here. Is more of a yellowish look right so it's kind of like the the inverse of this one the center is near the same this one just has I think what I was trying to get was more red out of this and I kind of ended up with a orange and bronze look and this one here is mostly yellow and then this version here is is kind of splits the difference between the two right we got some orange a little bit of bronze a little bit of magenta here to be honest I'm having a hard time deciding which one uh, I like the most uh, it, it really seems to depend on the day of the week <laughs> uh, so anyway I think I think this one's probably my favorite 
uh, but uh, drop a comment uh, down below and let me know which one you guys think is the best. Uh, oh yeah, I did. I did hit these with noise exterminator. Boy, I love noise exterminator. So I mean, really nice and clean in here. Image doesn't hold up too well when you zoom in, but I mean, you expect that at shorter focal lengths. Right here, it looks pretty good. All right, so uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Uh, hit that like button and uh, drop a comment and uh, clear skies.